So in this video, I wanted to show you how to, how or how I installed the Garmin Zumo 595LM onto my 2018 Honda Goldwing. Now I chose to install this on the left handlebar. You could of course install it on the right side using a ram ball mount. I have a DCT transmission, so that presents another challenge, is how do you mount it on the left handlebar. So I'm just going to show you how I did mine. Now I want to emphasize this is kind of a quick and dirty installation. This was not what I would call a professional installation, because I was in kind of a hurry. I'm going to wing ding, and I, I didn't want to have to take off all of the top shelter and to hide the wires. So I did some compromises on that for now. Once I remove the shelter, I will be able to hide the wires in a more professional installation manner. But everything does work. I turn the bike on, the Garmin comes on, no problem. Everything works as you would expect. And I'm going to also have a video coming very soon giving a full review of my experience with this Garmin Zumo 595. So what we have here is the cradle uh, for the Zumo 590 and my objective is to mount this on the left uh, left side of the handlebar. Now I've gone ahead and removed this little trim piece here. Uh, it was just one screw holding it together and I, I have a mounting, uh, a ram ball mounting bracket coming in for this but it won't be in for a couple of days. The trim ring is held in place with a single screw. I like to give it a firm tap with a hammer and a Phillips screwdriver and then the screw usually comes out pretty easily. Once you remove this screw, this trim ring just kind of comes apart and what you're left with is a nice round handlebar that you can mount to. Of course you want to store this trim ring somewhere, don't throw it away. You may want to reinstall this later. Here you can see the round bar that we're going to be mounting to, and I'm going to be using this RAM mount. There's the part number, and I'll put a link for Amazon in the description. To get the RAM mount to fit, you may need to file off just a tiny bit of this mounting pin. Here you can see the RAM mount installed in that area. I filed off just the tiniest amount of that pin to get that to fit in place. But what I want to go ahead and do is get my wires run for this cradle because the Zumo kind of clips into this cradle and derives power <clears throat> and can do other functions. The problem is I've got all this wire. Now let me show you what this has on it. it it's a big wiring harness and it's got, A, it's pretty long, and it's got all these other wires coming out of it. You've got mic inputs and and uh, maybe headphone jack inputs. I'm not exactly sure what all these inputs are. I haven't looked because I'm not going to use them. You even have a USB uh, where you can, like a USB port. I, I assume that's for like a, maybe a uh, thumb drive for music. And then of course the one I'm concerned about is the red and black power. This is really all I need. I just need power going to the Zumo for right now. I could cut them off. I know I've talked to some people or I've read some people who have just cut all these other ones off and just left the red and black. That certainly would make it a little bit cleaner. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and leave them on. I think I'm just going to kind of wrap them up and put a cable tie on them and see if I can't shove them down into, into here somewhere. The, the proper way to mount this is going to be to remove this top shelter because then I can get to all the areas down in here uh, to store all these wires. But in the meantime, I just want to run a black and red power cable up through this shelter uh, and then tie into this uh, black and red power cable right here. Okay, what I've got is I've just got some black wire and red wire matching the gauge of the wire that's coming from the Zumo harness. I'm just going to cut some pieces of wire and I'm going to uh, run this from the battery up to uh, this left handlebar area. I'm not going to connect them yet. I'm just I just want to run the wires first. 
With the seat removed, you can now see how I'm using a long cable tie to fish down through the shelter and it comes out down by the gas tank. It may take you a few tries to get this to work, but this is how I'm going to fish the wires up to the handlebars. Okay, I'm just going to tape these two wires to my fishing. It's actually a cable tie. It's about a three foot cable tie. You can buy these on Amazon. You can get them at Ace Hardware. Um, they're really flexible but yet they're stiff enough to where you can usually fish them through some pretty tight spaces. And uh, as you saw earlier, <clears throat> I was able to fish it through the shelter. Now, it did take me quite a few tries. Uh, so don't you have to be patient uh, because there's a very, very tight space here that we're trying to fish these wires through. So it could take you a few times uh, to try to get your little fishing line or wire or whatever you're using whatever tool you choose to use. Okay, so now I'm just going to try to pull these wires on through. Okay, and there are my wires. Now I've got plenty of length here, so I can cut off, I'm going to be able to cut off some of this wire. I don't need all of it. Remove the left side cover, and then remove the fuse box cover to get access to the accessory terminal screws shown here. This is where I'm going to attach the red and black wires for power to the Zumo. The top terminal is the positive, or in this case, the red. These terminals provide switched power, so they only provide power when the bike is turned on. I connected the other end of these two wires to the red and black wire coming from the Zumo harness using a simple butt connector. The Zumo Cradle comes with a wire harness with a lot of extraneous wires that are not needed for a Honda Goldwing installation. My initial attempt was to tie all of these wires together with cable ties and then attempt to hide these underneath the center console. Unfortunately, it was just too large. I even tried attaching them to the back of the Zumo and it just really, really looked ugly. Okay, as you can see, I just gave in. I finally just decided to go ahead and cut off all those extra wires because all I really need is this red and black power. So that's a lot less wire to bundle up. And I think without those wires, I can get it to fit underneath the console. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some Plasti Dip and kind of paint the end of these so that they're sort of waterproofed. I don't want those exposed because I don't want water to get on there and short something out. So I'll go ahead and put some Plasti Dip on there. Maybe even wrap it with a little silicone tape just to make sure it's sealed. Okay, after cutting off the wires, I was able to get that harness to kind of hide up under here. I'm not sure if you can see. There. It's basically underneath this console in front of the uh, little glove box here. There's a little space where you can tuck these wires up. Now what I did is I actually took this wire coming out of the Zumo and I ran it inside of this uh, cover. And there's two Allen screws, I believe they're maybe four millimeter, five millimeter, not sure. But that you remove these two little Allen screws and this cover comes off. Be careful if you remove these Allen screws not to scratch your paint with the other end of the Allen wrench. You have to be very careful uh, how you do this, but this little cover comes off and I was able to tuck this Zuma wire up here and then it just comes out here. It's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than it was before. And I can turn the wheel both directions, lock to lock, without anything getting in a bind or uh, scraping anything or rubbing any paint or anything like that. So I think this is going to be good enough to get me to Knoxville. We'll give it a try and see. Well, as you can see, here I am riding to Knoxville for Wingding 40. And the installation worked perfectly. The power connection worked perfectly. The Zumo comes on when you turn the bike on and goes off when you turn the bike off. And uh, now I will be doing a complete review of the Zumo 595.